You deserve to walk pain-free. Wouldn't you like to walk pain-free? Let's talk about back pain and heel striking. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to alleviate your back pain through a change in gait pattern. This is Growing Healthy, the channel where we explore self-improvement through movement. And in this video, we're gonna focus on the relationship between back pain and heel striking. Now, we're sitting more than ever, and that position for a long period of time, from the commute to work, at the dinner table, at the couch, watching TV, wherever you can imagine, modern man is basically sitting most of the day. We are also less active overall, and we are walking as a form of exercise for cardiovascular benefits, for fat loss benefits, for overall cognitive well-being. Now, what happens for a lot of people is that they don't like walking anymore because of the pain that they're feeling. And that is through the heel strike. I know people are gonna ask, well, can you use your heels? Yes, you're free to use your heels, but wouldn't you rather walk in a manner that is more efficient, does not lead to plantar fasciitis, knee problems, low back pain, a more developed lower abdomen. That is the way that I'm describing now. By using a four foot strike, not only do you practice with better balance, better efficient gait movement, but you also no longer will have the back pain. Even with the sitting that we're putting through right now, I believe that a change in your walking pattern will be enough in order to alleviate back pain. When you're using a heel strike, these rungs are about one and a half feet apart. And when you use a heel strike, all right, I'll start from here, and then I'll go forward. Now, not only is it hard to balance, so therefore we're used to canter levering, right? This is what we're doing here. Canter, canter levering to go forward. Now, you can see just by that demonstration why shoes have become so heavily padded. And if you look on any modern shoe, any conventional modern shoe, you will see an ever-increasing thickness of cushion for the heel. Now, if we were meant to walk on our heels, we would require no such padding. And I know you're gonna say, well, it's for runners who have high impact. No, these shoes are sold also as walking shoes. Walking shoes have increased exponentially in cushion padding. There's a reason for it. Obviously, it is trying to mitigate damage that is being caused through the gait pattern that we use as normal. What you understand is that once you switch to a more natural forefoot, not only do we mobilize and exercise the plantar fascia, we also engage the hip flexors to slightly move forward. We also have better balance and stability. We have less knee problems because we're getting a degree of knee flexion and extension. Flexion here, extension here. We're using the hamstrings in a proper motion of pulling and then pressing. When you see the heel strike, it is simply a swing forward. I am using the calf muscle to raise the heel up while at the same time, I swing the front leg, the lead leg forward. There is no lower abdomen engagement. Again, we're swinging the foot forward, landing on the heel through only the front quads. And to our detriment, we are isometrically holding the hamstring to keep the leg straight so that we can land on it. So now when you land, there's a momentary braking pattern 
in which you stiffen this leg in order to roll forward. This stiffening not only disengages all the other muscles that are necessary for gait movement, but it now is asking you to momentarily break in a manner that you're trying to go forward. So every time you are isometrically breaking for a moment, even for a second, in order to roll over to the forefoot to then begin the toe off process. Not only are you no longer using the plantar fascia, only when you roll over, right? And because of the design of conventional shoes, you aren't able to engage the big toes. There is no free will. So you're stuck in a moment in which you actually roll to the tippy toes to go forward. You're not actually using the joint. And you'll find that many people who have bunion issues, all types of foot problems are one, stuck in stiff shoes and heel striking. And this combination not only hurts your overall core and balance, but your back. And I'll show you why. When kicking, again, we have the lazy swing forward from the hip flexor, the stiffening of the hamstring, but also what we have is a jarring of the QL. Because we have stiffened isometrically the leg in order to transition, we have to find give or suspension somewhere else. We are now putting the responsibility further up the chain into the low back, into the QL muscles. In order to walk fast with a heel strike, there is no other way than to overstride. And that comes to the second problem with heel striking. If you can only increase your speed by overstriding, then when it comes time to take a long walk, walks for miles, or at a brisk pace, what will happen is that now we are overstriding. This overstriding provides even more of a pronounced dampening by the QL muscle. Now, the Q, now your low back is your suspension mechanism. Because in order to walk faster, you have to cover more ground. And if you're holding that leg stiff, then it can no longer act as the suspension mechanism. Remember, when you're walking with a forefoot strike, you are using as your su suspension mechanism the transverse arch, the ankle, the medial arch, the plantar fascia, the tibialis anterior. You are also using the quadriceps in a proper manner for the toe off and the hamstring for traction. This is what traction is. At no point do you engage in any traction by heel striking. There's no traction. You are... Okay? Do you see the difference? And when you add how many steps a day people are taking, this adds up to a lot of dysfunction, a lot of unused parts. A perfect example is the gastrocnemius. It is very weak on many people because it's not activated. People think that the calf raise alone will activate it, but it is actually raising it, leaning forward, and then pressing. Do you see the correlation? You will build all of these weak muscles that modern man habitually has through just changing your gait pattern. When you decide to implement a more natural strike along with wearing flexible shoes, because that is a must, you will not be able to engage any of your joints movement without wearing barefoot shoes. You will slightly press
And if you wanted to cover more ground to walk quickly, you would then just change your angle of leaning. Now that is extreme, but you get, understand the idea that the length of the lunge changes according to the speed you're trying to attain, not dependent on overstriding. Not only that, I am now lifting the leg. I'm engaging the hip flexors, the psoas to help move forward. I'm constantly engaging them. People, because of our constant sitting, have, are notorious for having weak hip flexors. Therefore, having anterior pelvic tilt, or even, depending on what's weak and what's misaligned, they'll even have posterior pelvic tilt because of their seating position. But whichever way, with a weak hip flexor and lower abdomen, you will not be able to achieve pelvic balance. So again, this move, as opposed to and no one's stride length is even that short but as an example you can see that I'm able to rebound the portion of the body developed to absorb the impact is working in its right function there is no absorption I can't even balance on it but yet if I were to I have immediate balance. I'm also developing my ankle dorsiflexion. These are the benefits of forefoot walking. But in this video, I hope this has detailed the vast benefits for your low back over heel striking. You at home understand that. You're watching this video because you understand that the status quo way of doing it is causing damage. And the manufacturers are exposing themselves because they have to change the mechanics of their shoes to mitigate the damage that people are enduring by just walking. If your only exercise activity is walking and you have pain from that, there's something wrong. And it's not overuse because walking is our primary work. It is our primary exercise. We do that as a function of being bipedal human beings. Not to mention the greatest benefit of, or the greatest way to alleviate low back pain is to strengthen the anterior hip muscles. Therefore, the hip flexor leading forward is now working and engaged going forward. And it's getting its daily dose of movement. It is getting stronger with every step. And once here gets stronger, then there's less of the burden on the low back. Once you're raising it, less of a burden on the low back. In fact, my low back doesn't even feel anything. It is not even stressed at all. And if you don't believe me, try walking uphill for a while and then see if you have low back pain. More than likely won't. Even in your the way that you walk now, if it's a heel strike, try walking uphill. See what happens to your back. See how your hip flexors feel after a long climb. Change your gait rid yourself of pain. This is Grown and Healthy, the channel where we explore self-improvement through movement. Thank you for watching.